Hello, it's the Sinister Gambino here with a new video. In this video, I'm going to be going over leaks along with other helpful information when it comes to Graph Online with Santos Tuners DLC. So, starting off with something light for those who might not get the memo that it's going to contain unreleased content for some reason. Starting off with the four media stick locations, there's actually a fifth one as well. There's one at the nightclub desk, and then the arcade bar, those two require being in the property obviously i would imagine you would have to actually own it i wouldn't imagine you could get it from like other people's apartments and nightclubs and all that stuff and then there's a couple in like public hangout spots as well third one is on like the casino roof somewhere fourth one's is at like the mod shop area when it comes to the alice car meet and then there's kind of a random spawn for a vehicle containing moody man's vehicle Moody Man's vehicle has his, like, Kenny's backyard and whatever thing that he has. That will be, like, a random spawn and whatnot. And, yeah, you unlock, like, a bonus mix, apparently, as well. So it seems there's, like, six mixes in total, including the bonus one and then the five media sticks, of course. And, yeah, for those who, for some reason, don't know, from here, there's going to be, like, leaks in unreleased content and stuff like that. By the way, before I forget, credit to the previous couple of screenshots I was showing off goes to Nero Citrix. I've been outstanding a couple of times I've used that particular source. And then these bunch of things, along with other bunch of things that I'll be going over later on, credit goes to Wild Brick 142. I believe they're the one I use the most for a source and whatnot. But yeah. Starting off, there was like a livery for the tour door or whatever. I think it's kind of going to be like the second highly exclusive livery that comes out for the tour door. I forgot you didn't notice, there's actually like a Presser Mark II's on it. And apparently there's some like really cool reference with it. And it would be really cool if they did it like a dynamic livery. It would be awesome if they were somehow to make it a dynamic livery where like every time you go up another Mark II, destroy another Mark II, it adds another one on there. And apparently there's a Sprunk X Eco event, and it contains like a bunch of bodysuits, which reminds me of when they did like the purple and like green alien stuff of like the Arena War DLC, and eventually it just all got popular and whatnot. And then there's also varsity jackets, forward backward hats, shoot bags, which is pretty interesting. I don't think we've really got a lot of like shoot bags for like the longest time ever. And then the coolest one of them all has to definitely be the livery for the hot ring saber and that's pretty interesting about the hot ring saber particularly he's getting another livery and that one has like 30 liveries already so further extensions into the livery we're getting for the hot ring saber apparently and then apparently there's a bravado banshee event that's going to be happening as well by the way for some of the liveries and other stuff that doesn't show all that great on the video I definitely recommend going to like the Twitter accounts that are being shown and whatnot in the video. Because I didn't want to have like so many different screenshots and stuff. It's already kind of annoying enough to make these voice clips of all the different things I have to go over and whatnot. So if you want a closer look at some stuff, definitely go to the Twitter's linked in the description. But yeah. For those who don't know, Banshee already got 10 liveries with the debut of this new DLC, but apparently it's going to be getting at least 5 more liveries, so the regular Banshee is going to have like at least 15 liveries, which is just insane. For sure, that's kind of like half of the amount of like the Hot Ring Sabers liveries, for example. And then, last but not least, there seems to be one for the Albany Hermes and then like the Ballista Kanjo, apparently. Only Hermes is an amazing, like, Albany and two livery or something, I believe it was, and then the Busa Kanjo is getting a livery, and I think those both vehicles had, like, around 10, so, again, nice livery expansions of previous vehicles in the past. Going to an outfit here, there's the Frontier outfit that will be coming out, apparently, and it will apparently be tied to some sort of collectible that will be coming out. Where you have to get 7 clothing scraps from random shipwrecks around the map. Apparently there's 30 spawns, and apparently there's a daily limit. And I'm assuming since you have to collect 7, the daily limit would be less than 7. That would be pretty weird. It seems like a really 
terrible way to do a clock double, to be quite honest. Like, if there's only, like, seven things, might as well just let people get it in, like, one day, similar to, like, the music sticks and whatnot. Going into a list of the Los Santos Tuner's reputation unlocks. A summary of all the unlocks is the final trade price is at 75, which makes sense because I think there's only two trade prices that are not tied to reputation. And I believe that's the Tailgater S, which is tied to the auto shop setup, and then the and this Euros, I believe that's tied to just becoming a member. And then I believe the rest of the 15 are tied to trade prices, so yeah, 15 times 5, 75. I believe I remember hearing that there's one every five ranks. So if you want all the like drip feed vehicle trade prices, for example, you want to get to rank 75 with reputation, which I don't think is necessarily too bad asking. Especially when you can earn it from AFK. If you want to unlock like all the possible like livery for like vehicle builds and whatnot, then you have to go to 192 and then 250 is a soft cap, but it's basically it basically means you get something every single rank, I believe, and then a thousand is a hard cap, which is where you no longer start earning things every rank past 250. And yeah, one of the outfits goes to a thousand, so that's a very easy way to verify that the maximum is a thousand, which I believe is the same maximum as the Arena War ranking system and whatnot. Going into more outfit unlocks that will be coming into the game, apparently. These all are going to be pretty themed off of Grand Theft Auto 3, of course, for the upcoming 20th anniversary. And there's a Rampage T, which does seem to contain that exact icon from that game, so that one's pretty cool looking, no doubt. Knuckle Duster T, I'm not entirely sure how that one would theme. Then again, GTA series videos, here's the source for this one, by the way, of course. They said possible, I don't really see how the Knuckle Duster one fits in, but yeah. There's apparently like a Wasted T, which actually has the exclamation mark, which is pretty cool, because I don't think there's an exclamation mark for Wasted for Grand Theft Auto 5. But I did check on GTA 3, like regular like PS2, and then like the mobile editions, and they both had like an exclamation mark when you get Wasted. So kind of nice detail there. And I think there was a Rockstar Games one, and then the wooden baseball bat, that one's definitely one of the cooler ones, I'd say. Definitely the coolest one, I'd say, would definitely have to be the penitentiary coveralls, which is obviously from the couple, like, introduction missions from the game. When you, like, drive 8-ball or whatever to, like, the clubhouse that you get at the beginning and whatnot. Going into a kind of secretive bonus when it comes to the Alice Car Meet, apparently there's actually a consecutive day kind of thing, similar to, like, the daily challenge, daily objective system in the game and whatnot where there's a reward for a week, two weeks, and then 30 days, or around a month, essentially. But yeah, seven days apparently you get 100 reputation points, 14 is 250, and then 30 days is 500. I don't really think it necessarily tells you it keeps track of that stuff, but yeah, apparently those are bonuses in the game, and source for that, of course, goes to Tez2. By the way, to expand on the bottom thing there about staying in the Alice car meet, Apparently you can just do a test drive, you can go to the garage, and then once it's on that screen about entering and exiting the Alice car meet, you can just stay on that screen instead of having to do something really weird with like your controller or something to be AFK. And yeah, I figure I might as well mention that obviously since there's a thousand rings, that's a lot to go through. And then credit for this one here goes to Dominic or whatever. And apparently Rockstar messed up the unarmored regular Karuma. Probably, of course, because they gave him liveries, I guess they somehow messed something else up with it or whatever. So apparently right now, unless they hotfixed it for some reason, the unarmored Karuma is more bulletproof than the armored Karuma right now. Unless, again, they hotfixed it. And you can actually apparently still use, like, the sticky bombs in it and stuff. So it could be good for, like, certain, like, criminal mastermind runs, for example, for, like, the regular and, like, the Doomsday Heist, for example. But yeah, that's a very interesting thing that they messed up there. Apparently there's also like pocket aircrafts, I believe, before, which essentially means you could spawn them like a personal vehicle. But unfortunately, I feel it. I think they hotfixed that one. Finally, onto the drip feed vehicles. The lowest prices tend to be around 1.1 million for trade prices, and then the like highest non-trade price, I believe, is 
the Comet S2 being almost 1.9 million, so like that's 1.1 to 1.9 million pretty much that you'll be spending on like every single vehicle. And putting that in terms of like Cavo Perico, like most people if you do it good enough at most can probably take an hour if you're good enough at it, so I'd say 2-4 to four hour investment per vehicle is probably going to be the kind of average in terms of time that it will take to make money using pr the probable best legitimate method in the game. But yeah, we already know about the Comet S2, already available to test drive, it will be available tomorrow on July 29th. But yeah, I think I remember seeing like spoiler upgrades for it. And by the way, we kind of know the release order. I got my release order off of Bruffy1322, so while we won't have an appearance in the video for his like Twitter or anything, I'll make sure to link him down in the description. And I'll have it for like GTA Expert, I believe it is. They have like customization videos on all seven tribute vehicles. I'll have them in the description as well. But yeah, S2, I believe I remember there being a spoiler upgrades that you aren't necessarily stuck with the dynamic spoiler, I'm pretty sure, because obviously it's cool and all, but there's the disadvantage of if it breaks, then you'll lose that traction bonus, I'm pretty sure. And then the vehicle after that, by the way, the first four will be on Legendary Motorsports, the last three will be on Severn San Andreas. The way the release order works for the most part is that it has to take from the first vehicle on a website, then the second, third, and then any of our subsequent vehicle, obviously on one website. But yeah, there's four vehicles, so like, obviously the S2 is already known to be the first one. And then there's three more vehicles on Legendary. Can't typically take from the last one. But yeah. Unfortunately, my usual source for vehicle stuff, which is Foxy Snaps, he doesn't seem to be around right now, so I couldn't really find like a website kind of image, so the separate vehicle images are just going to have to work. But yeah, after the S2 for Luxury Motorsports, it's apparently supposed to be the Emperor Vector. Emperor Vector, that was the vehicle and that actually was on the thumbnail of the Los Santos Tuners like trailer thing that came out a few days before the update came out, whatever, on that like Newswire, whatever. And then there's apparently a P Fister Growler, which is another obviously P Fister sport car vehicle. I'm not the most car savvy person, so I'm not obviously going to be going into like real life variants and stuff. But yeah, the Growler is basically a less expensive P Fister. I think the S2 actually ends up being the most expensive. And then the fourth vehicle is apparently the Uber Mach Cyper. Ubermach Cyper, I believe, is the last of the luxury motorsport vehicles. So again, the Ubermach Cyper technically can't really release before the Emperor Vector. It's very rare that they go out of the like traditional website order. But yeah. So for example, the Vector should come out before the Cyper for a release order. And then finally, on to the Severn San Andreas vehicles. First one's going to be the Dominator ASP, I'm pretty sure it is. Dominator ASP is the other Dominator and that's added with the DLC. There was obviously the one from the first day of the DLC, but there's another Dominator that will be coming out. That's obviously a muscle car, it's one of the two non-sport cars in the Drip Fiend. So yeah, there's five sport cars, I think, in the Drip Fiend. There's the muscle car and then there's one other vehicle. I'll be going over it later. But yeah, six vehicle is apparently the Sultan RS Classic. And for those who's confused, I don't think the Sultan RS Classic is the GTA 4 Sultan. I think we already have the GTA 4 Sultan from like way back in like January 2016, I think we got that in. But Sultan RS Classic essentially seems to be like a two-door version of the Sultan Classic from like the Diamond Casino Heist DLC, so it's kind of a two-door version of that, so I imagine it would perform better than that. I think Sultan Classic has good performance in one area in the sports class already, so I can already see the Sultan RS Classic being a pretty good option for the sports class. And then finally, last but not least, there's the Karen Previan and the Previan, or whatever pronunciation. Now, it's actually a retro vehicle from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, so similar in style to the 
an SCR350, and then also the NS Euros. It's kind of similar to those vehicles where it's brought back from San Andreas. It was apparently also a vehicle that was cut from Grand Fala 4, which is pretty interesting. And that's actually a coupe, and the last coupe I think I remember hearing that was in the game. I believe it was the one that were dropped, which was like a mid-2016 release from like the Finance Felony DLC. Which was just another version of the Windsor from like 2015 or something we got. So yeah, we're finally getting another coupe after like over five years with the Previan apparently or whatever pronunciation. So that's definitely very interesting. And for me, I'm not, again, not being a huge car savvy person, that's probably all of the interesting things I can think of which with each and every vehicle. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed.